this annoying, clacky, chompy skull owes its powers of irritationness to the fact that it has a print-in-place hinge that makes the whole thing work. And the great thing is that the design of this hinge is actually really simple, but it's really effective and it prints really well as well. And it's a design that I've used in a multitude of print-in-place designs recently. So things like boxes, and more boxes, but more complicated ones. All of these things still use fundamentally the same design and the same approach for hinges. Even this slide back box with its articulated lid is still based on the same principle. And this video will show how I implement this in Fusion 360. Now I recently did a video showing how I build these things or how I would build these things in Tinkercad, but for this kind of design, I'm probably in Fusion 360 anyway. But first, what do I mean by print in place anyway? Well, what I mean is the design prints with the hinge, with the two hinged parts attached in a way such that they, they can move, but they can't come apart. So it means that you've got a firm, robust connection there and you're not fiddling around with assembly after the fact to put in things like pins and so on. I mean, I love designs that are assembled from multiple parts anyway, but for something like a hinge, if I can have it already in place, that just makes the design a lot more robust and just a lot more elegant. So to some degree, it's a technical challenge, but it can also have some real practical benefits as well. So let's fire up Fusion 360 and, oh, first things first, unlike the Tinkercad video I did, this time I actually have a plan. I didn't say it was a detailed plan. But we're going to actually build something here. So we're not just going to make it up completely as we go, although there's going to be a lot of that anyway. What we're going to do is we're going to aim to build a hinged heart-shaped box just because it's almost Valentine's Day. And what is more romantic than 3D printed plastic boxes, I ask you? Especially when they're hinged without support. And print in place. So let's, let's open up Fusion 360 and make a start. Okay, so let's start by creating a sketch. First, we're going to create the, the shape of the box. We'll, we'll create the box lid and the box base, and then we'll worry about hinging them together. So let's start by drawing a heart, because that's, that's basically what we're trying to do. So arbitrarily, that's a good size, and that looks like a good angle. Now let's grab an arc, three point arc between those points, Just let them snap into place. You know, we should be using a tangent arc. Let's do that. Create arc, tangent arc. So we can tangent it off there and that, there we get some sort of continuity. But we probably want that in line, but further up. Looks good to me. All right, now let's just mirror that over that middle line. So we select that and Select those, mirror line there, okay, and then just trim away that middle thing. So, that's our profile. That is the fundamental basic design of our box. All right, so let's create, let's give that some height. I do that every time. 20 millimeters sounds good. Bear in mind that the lid is going to be the same depth, the way that we're approaching this. So the only thing that's important in defining this shape, by the way, is that we have at least one straight edge in that profile so that we can put the hinge there. And actually, even then, it's not that important. You can, you can work around it. But for our purposes, it'll be a lot easier if we have one straight line, at least, that we can use for hinging the box. OK. So we want the lid, and we want it to print top down on the bed next to the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this to create the lid essentially kind of folded over where it's going to sit. But it can't be flush up against the base because then it would print as one object. We need a certain amount of tolerance. And as usual, I'm going to use 0.5 millimeters. Now, the way I'm going to implement that is I'm going to create an offset plane off here 
and I'm going to make that 0.25 away from that face and that will let me create mirror select that object mirror over that plane and of course we now have 0.25 on either side of that plane which means we have 0.5 between the two objects and that's the basic that looks good that's how it's kind of look when it's done um, actually that's uh, let's just make sure that this orientation is going to work the fundamental thing we need to work out whenever we're creating a hinged object is what the axis of rotation will be so we know the axis of rotation will be on that plane but it won't be it won't be here in line with these faces because that would mean that when we rotated the two parts would be exactly on top of each other and reality doesn't work like that what would actually happen there is our print is probably going to be slightly bigger than we expect the the, the the realities of materials are, are what they are. So what we would end up with would be a box that wouldn't quite close and you could force it closed and maybe break the hinges in the process. So what we want is tolerance between the two parts when they're closed as well. And I'm going to use uh, 0.5 millimeters again. And I'm going to implement that by once again, creating an offset plane off this top surface here, 0.25. And that will let us construct an axis between these two planes. Do we have our, there we go, there's our axis of rotation. So I'm going to hide the two planes and now we just have our two parts and our axis. And let's just test this out too. So if we rotate this thing just make it a rotation over that axis. If we spin that around 180 degrees, we should find that there's a tiny gap in the middle. Yeah, there we go. So that's what we want, but we don't actually want to move it. So now we have the basic blocks of our box and we have the axis of rotation. Let's give the, the base and the lid some shape. Now, I don't actually want the lid to be square. If, if you remember my diagram, because I have a plan, I had a kind of a chamfer on the, the lid. Now, the geometry here might be friendly enough to do a chamfer with, but let's have a look. If we use this tool. And will it let us, oh yeah. It won't let us go quite that far. So there is another approach we can take here that will suit my purposes. I'm going to extrude that back by 10 millimeters, and then I'm going to extrude it forward by 10 millimeters, but at an angle of minus 45. There we go. So ultimately the same effect. The geometry is slightly different, but it's the effect that I want. So that is awesome. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, next thing, we need to think about how thick do we want the walls of this box to be? And I'm going to arbitrarily say, let's make it three millimeters. So grab the shell tool, grab those two surfaces, three millimeters, magic, so easy. Now, when these things close as well, rather than just have these two flat surfaces that meet each other, let's have a, a sticky outy bit that meets a, a, an indent much like the hinges will be. So let's just do that by... Now, we could just do an extrusion with a, an angle, but then we would end up with a bit of a sharp edge on the outside, which I'm not a huge fan of. So instead, let's just create a sketch on here. We'll offset this minus 0.5 and this one 0.5 and that sketch let's have a look i mean this this is not entirely necessary but i like these kind of little details so let's extrude that forward so that that now is what were the dimensions that was three dimensions so that's two millimeters there let's extrude by two millimeters at 45 degrees Again, minus 45 degrees would work better. See what we've got there. So now we have 
a bit of a ridge sticking up, but it still has a bit of a lip on the outside. Let's do the same on the other half. So we can probably duplicate the geometry from the other piece, but this is so easy that we'll just do it this way. Now I'm not trying to teach anyone how to use Fusion 360 here, and yeah, there's so many ways that you could approach this thing anyway, and I'm sure there are more maintainable ways of doing what I'm doing. For example, I haven't parameterized any of these tolerances, which is what you really should do if you want to be able to scale these things, for example. But let's just keep it simple for now. Also, all these rotations and checking that things fit where they should be, you could use the components to, to do that uh, much more robustly. But again, we'll just keep it simple. So, we want the matching one, minus two and 45 degrees, minus 45 degrees, and now we have a matching part on the other side. Now we don't need to worry about tolerances there because we already have that tolerance built into our axis of rotation. But look at that, we have the basics of our box. Although maybe we'll just smooth out some of these inner lines. Let's go to say three and a half. See, I haven't really thought through the, the geometry specifically, so I'm happy to be guided by what Fusion will tolerate on these things. Alright, so that's that's what it looks like. So it's, oh, actually this, this bottom bit here can be tidied up as well, let's do that. I usually like to have, I, I don't generally have 90 degree angles between the print and the, the printing surface, just because it makes it slightly darker, slightly darker, slightly harder to get the thing off the off the bed. So I love my build tax spatula and it's really useful if I can get a bit of a hold on that and, and leave the things up. So how we go with two mils there. I like it. So that's the that's the, the overall shape of the two parts done. So now we can build the hinge. So the basis of our hinge is going to be a cylinder. But how big do we want to make this thing? Well, I've decided that the hinge on this is going to be flush with the inner walls of the, the box, just because it makes it simpler when we're actually constructing the attachment between the hinge pieces and the box itself. So let's find out for sure what that distance is. So the distance between that surface there and that surface there is 6.5 millimeters. So that's what we're going to use. Right, so we can create our basic hinge cylinder anywhere at all because we're just going to align it anyway. So let's just put it randomly on a surface. We want that to be 6.5 millimeters and we'll make it five millimeters long. Okay, and I forgot to change that to new body. So let's just go back and fix that. New body. Okay. So now we have a cylinder that's just floating there. So let's go modify a line. And we want to align that with that axis. Done. Okay, so now that is on the axis. So let's just move that somewhere more useful. And just pop it up here, approaching where the the curve starts so it's still on that straight stretch just because that makes life easier for this. All right and now we can think about building the actual hinge. So let's just hide these bodies. Actually let's name these bodies. Let's be crazy and actually give these useful names. So that can be the base and that can be the lid and now that they have names we can hide them. And so all we're left with is the basis of our hinge here. So let's go have a look at this thing. Now, let's create a copy of that. And we want to move it five millimeters, sorry, 0.5 millimeters away. Because again, that's the tolerance I'm using with these things. And yes, I know I should be parameterizing. So we need these parts to serve as functioning hinge. And this is where the really simple hinge design comes in. Now I'm grabbing, this is not this surface here. This is the back surface of the front cylinder. It's just easier to grab it there rather than rotating. And I'm going to extrude that 
by negative 2 millimetres and at minus 45 degrees. And so that's going to chop this section out. So we now have this kind of cone chopped out of the back of that one. And you can see what's coming here, especially if you've seen the other here. 2 millimetres at minus 45. And lo and behold, we have the makings of a hinge. So if these things were attached to something else, then they would just swivel against each other and stay in place. So that begs the question, how do we attach these things? Now there's a few things we need to consider, and the key one is printability. Because at the moment, if we tried to print something like this just attached to, say, the base, look at that overhang there. That's, that's not going to be anybody's friend. So we need to make sure that we manage things like that. Now, we could just use the, the fusion tools to, uh, to modify these sorts of things afterwards with a, a chamfer or whatever, but let's actually build them because it's not that hard anyway. So let's just hide that base again and create a sketch on this surface here. All right, now first thing is we're going to need some clearance around the rotating parts. So 0.5 millimeters is our friend as always. Now the next thing is that we're going to need these bits to join onto the lid and onto the base. So we're going to need some vertical attachment space. So let's just And a reference there, just arbitrarily long, as long as it's the right width, that's fine. And we're going to need a, a tangent down here at 45 degrees, because 45 degrees is a pretty reasonable angle to be printing, uh, to serve as a, a way for the printer to get up to these points here when it's printing. So let's just do that. Oh, it doesn't want to snap, does it? All right, 45 it is. Okay, it snaps onto there, and down at a right angle. Fine, I'll type that as well. Okay, so that's one side. There's probably easier ways to do these things. So that one snapped, that was nice. Okay, and down to there. I'm just going to trim away some of this excess stuff that we don't need. So we don't actually need any of that anymore. Okay, now let's pause there and build up these hinge objects. We're going to need to go back to the sketch to do a bit more work around the, the clearances for the parts we were about to make, but we can just take a moment to see what these hinge components are going to look like when they're properly fleshed out. So. We are just extruding over the length of that piece there. Looks good. Join, and we've consumed that sketch, so let's just go turn that back on again, because we're going to need that. Just hide that first one, and... Okay. And that's going to go to the back here. Oh. We don't need that. Join, looks good. And we can bring that back in as well. So let's have a look what we've got there. Looking a bit more practical, we now have two hinge components that can actually join to things and that can actually be printed. So if these were actually attached to something, then you wouldn't worry about these overhangs anymore. So let's have a look how that sits against the base. So what have we got here? Now, obviously we couldn't just join these in because we just have one big lump of plastic. So what we're going to need is for these parts here to remain joined, but for these parts here to have full clearance around them so that they can move because these parts here are going to be attached to the other side and we need to make sure that nothing on this side is going to hinder their movement. So let's do that. In fact, let's just scoop out a big chunk of space from both sides 
so that neither side has any hindrance at all. Okay, so back to the sketches. Let's just hide those again, bring our sketch back up, and open that. All right, so offset. Offset is always our friend when dealing with current tolerances. So 0.5 on that, and 0.5 on that, except in the other direction. All right, we might just do some extending as well. Okay, and that should be what we need. Okay, so at this point though, we need to think how big is our overall hinge going to be? So let's just hide that sketch for a moment because if we bring this back up, we want our hinge to actually extend all the way down here. So let's do that. Let's make some more hinge parts. So all we're going to do is we're going to mirror these things off this back plane of this part. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Create mirror. That, 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 and, oop, not that, that. And how's that going to sit? Looks good to me. Which means we now know how much of these parts we need to scoop out to allow for the hinge movement. So let's bring that, get, actually let's hide no, let's do one thing at a time. Let's extrude some things. Now, we're going to need to grab more parts than that. But first, I just want to set our extents for these things. So we want to go 0.5 millimeters past there. And this actually needs to be two-sided because we need to go back 0.5 millimeters from this end as well. Minus 0.5. All right, and now let's just hide all of the hinge parts because we don't actually want to cut them apart just yet. Well, at all. And let's look in closer at what we have here. So let's just hide the lid for now and we'll just do the base. So the face is going to be connected to parts that use this part of the sketch. And we need to cut out the parts related to the other side. So let's do that. And we need to cut out everything in this surrounding circle. Let's do that. All right, and now we need to, so let me just, there we go, that's easier. So we're cutting all of this stuff out. We Actually, it doesn't matter if we cut that out there because that's not within the range of this thing. All right, so cut. And there we go, we have that chopped out. Now let's just extrude again over that same range. Except we're not actually going to be cutting this same object this time. Instead, we're going to cut the lid. Okay, so now we're looking at the lid and we need to do the opposite of what we did just before. Let me just get that in the middle and grab all of these parts. See, if we only chopped up to there, then we'd still get stuff that's would bond to it in the printed stuff. So we need that whole lot. Okay, so let's hide that sketch. Look at the base and lid. How are they looking? They both have kind of matching parts. And you can see on that profile there, you've got the bit that goes up and the bit that goes down that are gonna fit into each other. So let's bring back all of our hinge parts. Oh 
Did I accidentally chop one of them out earlier? Let's have a look. What did I cut earlier? There's one of them is missing. No, it wasn't that one. Was it this time? It is great that you can just go back into your history. Oh, look at that. Terrible. Okay, so that's fixed now. So there, those are our hinge parts. Well, that's really our whole box. So let's just start combining things. So combine that with anything it can. And combine that with anything it's touching. And we have two parts left. So one of those is actually the base. And the other half is the lid. Okay, so let's let's try rotating that and see how it looks. So that I'm going to rotate it over that axis. And I'm going to zoom in down here so we can get an idea of how these hinge parts look as we do it. Look at that. Lots of nice clearance. And then when it's closed, it will look like that. And there we have it. That is a hinged box full of romance and love as only 3D printers can deliver. And that's it. So. I mean, admittedly, this is not the first time, uh, it's not even the first time I've designed this thing, because I had some technical difficulties with my earlier videos. Uh, but it, it's not a complicated concept, and while applying it to a particular design might have its own complexities, it's something that you really don't have to think about too much when you know that it's going to suit your purposes. I mean, this will fit most horizontally oriented hinges, and it, it is a a fantastic thing when you can just use something like this and not have to think about that and it frees you up to think about the the bigger picture and the the, the more specific things that are related to the problem you're solving so for example this thing just has that same hinge design through there and there's some stuff pivoting on either side but it's just that same 45 degree cone design and it just works so easily those angles print really reliably and the overall result is really tough as well so it's just so useful and and i find more uses for it all the time and there it is uh support free print in place hinged heart shaped box and this is where we can see where those tolerances are important now the first thing is that if we didn't have the tolerance between the two parts they wouldn't come apart in the first place but also that tolerance at the top that we allowed for in the rotation means that these two parts fit together really neatly because if we hadn't allowed for that and we had just rotated on that plane of those two top surfaces we'd get to you know somewhere near closing and then we'd start to get forced through that hinge instead and it wouldn't close proper, properly and we'd probably damage the hinge. But by, by having that tolerance, it means everything is nice and neat. Now, the specific tolerance that you'll need will depend on your printer. I use 0.5 millimeters and it works on the printers that I have. Uh, this printer here can deal with much tighter tolerances, but I just generally try to use something that's going to, going to work on, on most things. So, I will put this model up on my mini factory. My patrons will also have this available for free, but you can now just go through and create your own. And I would love to see your versions of this kind of thing as well. So you can tag me on Instagram and on, what's the other one? Twitter. <laughs> I'm Clockspring 3 d on both of those. Uh, yeah, you can find my designs on my mini factory and I'm also Clockspring 3 d on Patreon as well. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will catch you next time.